Hey guys, I'm Sean Chartier, the founder and CEO of Custom Offsets, Offsets Garage, Team Stance, and some other stuff. And this is my episode of The Builder. Uh, I'm in it just to rewrite history, cause I'm in the mood to label us the leaders of the leaders of the new school. This ain't for the radio, can't find this on YouTube. This the type of killing that these critics say used to. Victorious. to the point where we had actually picked up the CO Lambo and with that you know it's it's an expensive car it's an exotic car they they really decrease in value when you over customize them they really decrease in value when you start um, doing things that can't be undone so our whole intention with that is how can we make it look like no other Lambo but let's make it where it's all reversible It really is a fascinating thing when you watch the custom car or truck builder. Whether the person is a full restoration builder, or a visual customizer, or a full-blown adrenaline junkie motor guru, that is not for you or I to judge. The desire to stand out, the desire to bring back the past, the desire to go so fast, it's all in the spirit of creating something that you can see or feel, but others likely do not understand. It never goes smoothly. The word custom is synonymous with difficult and challenging. If it was easy, everyone would do it. But the failures and challenges setbacks and letdowns. They are the addiction. The harder it is to pull off, the more rewarding the accomplishment. There will never be another feeling like that first drive. When everything is exactly the way you pictured it. When that blank campus becomes the work of art, you can see, but no one else understood. Now they can see it. So what we intentionally did is instead of paint the car, we wrapped the car. So it's got a full wrap on it, which can be removed. And it's right back to the silver color. We didn't want to mess with the suspension. It's already got an adjustable coilover suspension that rides really nice. And we didn't want to take away from that. So we just went with um, the Lexani three-piece forged wheels. 
and we did a really different setup. We did 20s in the front and 21s in the back. And we went as aggressive as humanly possible. We actually went more aggressive in uh, stance and offset than people said we could. I know some major companies even told us they wouldn't stand behind the wheels if I chose to put them on there like that, but Lexani did, and that's why we chose those. So the whole idea behind Seal Lambo was how can we modify this vehicle that can be put right back to stock and show that you can still make it your own which, uh, without taking away from the value of the vehicle and being able to restore it back to original. So that was the concept behind Seal Lambo. So then at that point, we had CO2 and CO Lambo, and it started to become winter in Wisconsin, and I realized I didn't have a plan because I had decided with the white painted suspension on CO2, I didn't want to run it year round, that which was the original plan. So I got kind of backed into a corner and had to make a decision. I was looking at a lot of used trucks and I didn't want to deal with the problems. So I decided to get CO24, which is the most base model Chevy Silverado um, double cab you can possibly get. It was, I literally went there and I said, do you have a black one? I'll take the cheapest black one you have. That was that truck. It had the chrome package on it, which I didn't want. So I immediately had them go through and wrap all of the chrome and just get rid of it. And then because I have an addiction to custom wheels, I knew I had to have wheels on it. So we went and pulled the rear blocks out of it to level it down, do a reverse level on it. And then we threw uh, some dub baller, 24 inch dub ballers on it. That's pretty much where that one is stuck. My plan was to slam it. I was gonna do a static 5.7 uh, drop on it. And then I started realizing, you know, for my winter vehicle, I probably shouldn't have a slammed Silverado when we get a foot of snow sometimes up here. So that poor truck is stuck. It wants to be slammed, but unfortunately, I don't think it's gonna happen because I do need to remain with one vehicle I can actually use as a pickup truck, throw stuff in the back and pull trailers around. That's where CO24 is stuck, if you've been wondering. Why did I buy a Gixxer? Well, I used to have one. So back in the day, I had bought a 2000 GSXR 600 S Rad, and it was black and yellow and had all these graphics and stuff. Well, I stripped all the graphics off of it. I pulled all of the aluminum off of it. I polished everything. I polished the frame, polished the swing arm, polished the kickstand, then found out that it's steel and you can't polish steel because it just rusted. And then I painted the kickstand back to black so that it would stop rusting. But I took that whole bike apart and I basically turned it into a Corona theme bike. So I had the Corona race um, or Corona stickers on it and a couple of race stickers to kind of just make it my own thing. And I of course had the spikes around the windshield and everything back in the day. So as I started getting to be a not so young guy, I was starting to miss that because I had sold that bike many, many years ago. And one day I just decided to pop on Craigslist and find another GSXR. Because back when I had that, when I dreamed of having the new body style, which is what this one is. And uh, so I just bought it and rode it a couple times. We lowered it and uh, stretched it because I was like the look of it. And I don't know if I intend on putting many miles on it. Um, a couple weeks ago, we wrapped it. I saw one on the internet that was all white and thought it was pretty sick. So now it's all white. And I think it's one of those things where I just like having it when I, I just need to take a ride, but I, I actually just like looking at it more than anything. It's one of those vehicles that I had it, I had a lot of good memories with it, and I just wanted it back so that when you look at it, you kind of have those memories of that first one that I built because 
If you're not picking up on this, I can't leave anything alone. I've never had a, a stock anything ever. I've even customized my lawnmowers. My riding mowers have had Dukes of Hazard themes and everything else. So I can't leave anything alone. People get really mad that I have a Hummer. <laughs> they throw eggs at it, they throw baloney at it. I'm not sure what the baloney was a sign of, but I thought it was baloney. So the reason I had an avalanche is because nobody else wanted avalanches and I knew I could make it look sweet. The reason I've bought all these vehicles is because I always have to have the one that stands out on the road. Everybody has always been mad about Hummers and that makes me like them a lot. Um, when they came out, I wanted one. When the H3 came out, I wanted one even more. When the H3T came out, I wanted that even more. And then the value of the H2 started coming way down. I can't remember what we were doing one day and we just decided we should go get a Hummer. And then like that day I hunted for him all day and we bought one that night at about 11 o'clock at night. I uh, went and picked it up and I talked myself into needing a yellow Hummer because Hummers are supposed to be yellow and that screams Hummer. But then I got it and put chrome wheels on it and it made people so mad that I couldn't go anywhere without them yelling at me because they were so mad that it was a yellow Hummer with giant chrome 22 inch wheels. So then we went and uh, linered it to be the charcoal gray. And now it still has chrome wheels to make people mad, but they all want it to be black. So they're gonna stay chrome. But I can tell you that you should all go buy a Hummer. It is so fun to drive. It's so cool to be in. It water pours through the windshield every time it rains. If you go through a car wash or go to the uh, car wash, when you're leaving, the water just dumps onto the dash. You don't even know where it's coming from. And all you think is, I feel like a Hummer should leak water right through the windshield. Because <laughs> you feel like you're off-roading, but you're really just driving through town. You just left the car wash and it's just running water right through it. I have a feeling that Hummer is going to get wrecked this summer because I'm going to be going up to my cabin and it just keeps looking at me like I should beat the living piss out of it in some mud holes. So that's probably going to happen. Uh, as far as what's next for me on the vehicle builds, I'm pretty much going to stall for a minute here. Um, I've kind of hit that point. We just sold the CO Avalanche because I can't keep up with all the vehicles. Um, took me most of the day to get these ready just for this video. Uh, so it's becoming the point where I can't enjoy them all. So I've, I've let CO Avalanche go, which was really tough to do, but it was time because it was gonna sit there and rust and now somebody else can enjoy it. Um, I would say these are all I can handle. Uh, two of them, the Avalanche, or the Avalanche, the uh, CO2 and the Lambo will be making their way to our new showroom. We're actually about to build a new facility for custom offsets. So those will uh, be making their way there. And then the other two, I will continue to drive a lot. Uh, I, I'm kind of taking a break. So like I said, I went from you know building vehicles to building businesses right now. I'm really focused on building custom offsets to what I know it can be. Uh, so we're reinvesting all of our time and money into that, which is why we're building a very large facility. And you know, we just keep, keep working harder and harder to create that. Fitman Inc. is our new brand. So we're really trying to help out with the car market and help out with car fitment and go to that next level with um, vehicles, fitmaninc.com. If you guys haven't checked it out, if you're car guys. So I would say I'm focused right there. And I know that my next vehicle is gonna be an Aventador. Um, when I got the Lamborghini Gallardo, I thought I could get over the doors that open like this rather than like this, like on the 
trapper keeper I had when I was eight and on the clock that I had when I was 10. But every time I get out of it and the whole family goes, oh, because they thought the doors were gonna go up, it just, it hits you right there. <laughs> and you know that, you know, when I was a kid, that's what I wanted were those Lambo doors. So I have to get an Aventador for that reason. I don't like the Mercilagos. There's just something about them that makes me angry. So, and then Kevin says that I have to wide body the Aventador. So that will definitely be what's gonna happen. I think I'll get one, drive it for one summer, and then have it go into surgery for the whole winter and come out wide body on air and just do the ultimate build, um, the dream vehicle that you know you can take out and just uh, you know know that you've you've built that ultimate machine that you've out, you saw at SEMA. I saw one there my first year five five years ago, and I just fell in love right away. Or four years ago, whatever year they came out, five years ago, first year they came out, and uh, I knew that that was going to be the end vehicle. The trouble is I don't want to get to the end yet, so I'm going to take a few years before I do that. In the meantime, I've kicked around the idea of getting a CTS, um, either a V or I'd like to get all wheel drive so I can play with it in the winter too. So I'm kind of torn between the two. So either turbo the uh, all wheel drive or just do the V. And then it needs to have like Lambo doors and stuff to really make people mad and make it unique. So. That, I think that's gonna probably be the next toy because then I can put the whole family in something that looks like a Lamborghini and has Lamborghini doors, but it's not a Lamborghini and people are confused and angry at the same time. You know, it was funny because when we were preparing for this, I had these parked out front because I was detailing them and they're sitting in front of my, you know, modestly or low priced house, according to the comments that came across Facebook and Instagram. And people, you know, made a joke that my vehicles are worth twice as much as my house. And that is extremely true. And that will stay true because to me, a house is something you go home to sleep in. Um, I've got my shop for entertaining. So we usually have meets and get people together there. My house is just where I sleep. I, you know, houses do nothing for me. Vacations I like to go on, but I don't really like to just, you know, spend a ton of money because after a week of vacation, you come back and you're back to just the regular day to day. I have been obsessed with vehicles, um, bikes, cars, trucks, because you can jump in at any time and just go. You know, you can just escape. Uh, and it's just you in that vehicle. And I think that's the difference. And that's why I've got that obsession. Because at the end of the day, and you hear people say it, no matter what happens, I still got my truck. And I think that, you know, even if the economy gets really bad, people still spend money on wheels for their truck. Because as long as they drive that thing on a backcountry road, they don't care, you know? And I, I think that's, that's the obsession really, is that they won't, they, I, I don't know. You can just get away and it's yours and you made it yours. And when people look at it, it's an extension of who you are. And I don't think you can do that with a house. Some people would probably argue you can if you're a really good gardener or something like that. I'm not. Um, I don't think there's anything like customizing a vehicle when, when, it, when you talk about showing your personality through something. And I can't paint, so this is where I'm at. Hope that kind of helps you guys understand why I'm obsessed with vehicles, why I've given up everything to help other people obsess about vehicles why I have so many freaking vehicles and appreciate you guys checking out my The Builder and I hope to hear from some of you guys because we'd love to feature some of you. Peace.